I am Madhu Sheth and I was born in Kutch, Gujarat. But my family moved to Madras, which is Chennai now, when I was five years old. I went to a private Gujarati school where I learned my mother tongue along with English and Hindi. Of course, Tamil, we just picked it up because I was so young, I had no, no problem in picking it up. So I learned Tamil also. After my college education, I went back and started teaching Gujarati as a language to high school students. With my friend's influence, I joined a literary association that had been founded by Jagdish, my husband, husband-to-be. We both started working closely together for the magazine that was published yearly. Jagdish was not only intelligent, but also a thorough gentleman. Before we knew, we were in love. Before I realized, he moved to the USA for higher education to fulfill his dream. It would make him two years, uh, it would take him two years for the MBA degree, but then, so I decided to wait for that period. Before I knew, he had decided to, pay, to do PhD and was inviting, he had just made the decision and he asked me to come and join me to United States. He was inviting me to move to United States. This whole plan was as exciting as it was terrifying. This was early 1960. I don't think any of you are as old as, as we are. Maybe nobody lived in 60s, but I guess we did. Uh, so anyway, it was early 1960, with the norm was to have arranged marriages, especially where I come from, from a very conservative family. The Gujarat, I mean, of course, in Madras, most of the people are conservative, but then Gujaratis from Madras are more conservative because not <laughs> we want to conserve our Gujarati heritage in Madras. So, uh, no one would understand my love story with someone studying thousands of miles away in the United States. And I wonder, you know, how am I going to break the story? How am I going to tell my family that I want to marry this guy who is all the way in the United States? They don't know that I love him. So a solution came to me. I decided to tell my cousin who used to live with us, study from our, you know, from our home, staying in our home and study from there. So. I was hoping that he would tell my family about that whole situation, and he did. So after much deliberation, we were engaged, and uh, being a student, Jagdish could not afford to return to United uh, return home for wedding. So he, we improvised. I came to United States to get married and start a new life. Now it was not that easy, okay? It's, it sounds very easy right now, but it wasn't that easy for me. This is the first time I was flying all the way to a country that I did not know anything about. This is the first time I was sitting on a plane. Forget about coming out of the country. So, as soon as I left India, my, com my comfort zone, I became so nervous. Though I was excited on one hand, but very anxious on the other hand. I could not sleep at all on the flight because I thought, because I did not know when to get off. And I thought, if I fell asleep, what if everybody gets off the flight 
and I'm the only one who left behind. Can you imagine that? But I, it really scared me and I did not sleep a wink. So anyway. So, um, they, okay. And then I starved all the, the, throughout the whole flight because they did not have any vegetarian meal for me. On, you know, and I missed my whole, oh, of course, this, are there. This, this happens all the time, you know, when you are vegetarian, most of the time they don't have meals for you. So, and then I had not missed my family as long as they were with me till Bombay. But then as soon as I sat on the flight, I started missing them terribly, terribly, because it's the first time I was away from my family. In India, usually they don't send the girl away. The girls are just taken such good care. They are so protected, said so well protected, and they are so well taken care that I was not, you know, I was, I never flown again. I had never flown by myself. So this is the first time. Anyway, so when I, when I finally arrived in Pittsburgh, it was dead of the winter. It was month of December. Can you imagine Pittsburgh in winter? Since this is the first time I was seeing the beautiful snow and I loved the sight of it, the reality of the winter hit hard soon. The sight of bare tree and the never-ending snowfalls made me think that I was on a different planet. <laughs> Come from India, you know, such a beautiful country. And uh, snow and ice made impossible to get out of the house where, and there was, n there was not a single person walking on the street. The only thing you see is cars passing by, but no, no human being you see anywhere around. Made it look like a ghost town. And especially for someone who came from a crowded country and a place with a lot of hustle and bustle. So, life, anywhere. Life in America was challenging. I had left behind everything I knew. My family, friends, my full-time job, the culture, and the country. Now, you know one thing I just wanted to let you know that when I was offered the job of um, teaching, I was the first Gujarati girl to be teaching in Madras from my society. So, thank you. So it was not easy for me not to have a job. All of a sudden, I found myself, I became a housewife. I had to clean, which I never did before. I had to cook, which I never did before. You know, people, do, people did all of that for me, but I had to learn all of that. And I didn't mind doing it, really. I didn't mind learning, because I just love to learn anything and everything. So being a, uh, being a vegetarian was a big challenge. There were no Indian grocery stores in the whole country. There was no resources or any support system in those days. Nowadays we have a lot of societies, so many, you know, temples and uh, so many stores and restaurants and, and lot of things, you know, that really help you get, get together and, you know, help each other. But in those days there was nothing, no resources. And uh, anyway, for, Ameri for Americans, the world vegetarianism was a novelty. They didn't even know what the vegetarian means. They thought we, all we did eat was lettuce and carrots. That's all they thought. Anyway, it was a novelty for the, uh, the main source of protein. The main source of protein for dal that we made, there was no dal available. So we, have, did, did, do any of you remember Campbell's soup? 
the we used to make dal out of the green pea soup that was the only kind of protein we used to get and uh, many times i felt what i was really doing in the strange country here so but i persevered i uh, gave birth to two beautiful children eventually and without any help from my family or his family or any of the families couldn't talk to my mother you know remember in those days we didn't have of course cell phone forget about the cell phone i could not even call on the regular phones because i had phone at my house but not most of the people had phone in their home their homes there'll be homes in offices and you have to book the phone and it'll take you something like 6 to 8 hours before you can get the phone and i didn't want my mother to go and wait in the office so i could not even talk to her so i had not talked to her till i went back to her, till i went back to india and that was after 5 years so that's right it was not easy it really life was not easy you know not only you know so i i really brought up both the children uh, i gave birth and brought brought them up in this country and uh, things were not easy but we and we we moved a lot that was the biggest you know problem we had to move from place to place almost every year we moved and uh, that was a very tough time you know so we had to book the phone and uh, that's why i could not talk to my mother but slowly but sl- surely i learned to navigate in the new world and started and started and finally while i was bringing up my children i started a business because i wanted to do something besides bringing up the children and doing cooking and cleaning and uh, raise the family uh, along with my along with my husband we okay i gave up my career really to bring up my children vegetarian and also i wanted to give them we wanted to give them good indian values and it helped a lot while my children were growing up there was time when they really they would really ask questions where it was difficult for us to answer when my daughter was around 4 years old she asked me one day why don't we go to church all of my friends american friends they all go to church why don't we go to church we really didn't have a very good answer because we can say we did say well we are not christian so that's why we don't go to church then said well why don't we have our own church well, <laughs> we didn't have any temples in those days so and we were very young ourselves we were very poor and we could not afford to build the temple at that time but this really stayed with me forever that my i am not able to provide the religious background that i was brought up with i went to in, i went to a temple every day because my there was a temple nearby and my parents made me go there and i enjoyed going there and you feel you know that you have the identity and we all have identity either you are jain or you are hindu or you are whatever you know background you have whatever religion you follow you all have that background so this is what it really stayed with me and i it felt me it made me feel very bad that i'm not able to give them that good background finally once we became empty nester we decided to give back to society we started couple of um what did we start honey okay so we we had uh set foundation two of the set foundation and then we also decided to build a temple now we had not we we had just moved 
to Atlanta and realized that community does not have a Jain temple. This gave me a new sense of purpose in life. We donated the land and then started working on building the Jain Center and the temple, ensuring the future generation would have a place to connect with their roots, just like I did when I came first to the United States. Even now, a volunteer, I, even now I volunteer at the temple, often putting long hours. It, was, it has given me a sense of purpose and fulfillment. I am very proud of the community that we have, we, that we have, lived, we have built together. Looking back, my journey has been of love, resilience, and fulfillment. From a young girl in a conservative family in India to a woman who braved to build a life in a foreign country and help build a Jain temple and a community for years to come. And I am especially proud that same values and image and uh, ingrained, uh, same values are ingrained in our children and our grandchildren. Now, you know, it might look very easy that we build it. Building is not that easy because if you all know, politics is, uh, politics is everywhere, no matter where you go especially in religious places, there are more politics. But we withstand that. We all, you know, you have to face all of that. But in spite of all of that difficulties, there were a lot of difficulties, we were able to build the temple, and I'm very proud of that place. And today I came here late because, I don't know, but pollution, Jains have pollution, and pollution was just finished last week. And for the first time, we had 90 Athais. Now, if you don't know what is Athai means, they are fasting for eight days. There is no food taken whatsoever, only the boiled water. And for the first time, there were 93 Athais. It was a record break. So, <laughs> so then they are, they are celebrating this Athai, and then you have to go and visit them. And, help them celebrate. So that's what I have been doing, going from morning till, I still have one more place to go for the celebration. And that's the reason why I, went, I, I came late, but I'm so proud of it. I really don't mind many times, you know, when you are building a temple or when you have built a temple, you put on, put, you put many, many hours, but I don't mind that at all. I love to do that. I'm still, you know, very busy with that. I'm very active with my temple and I'm, I'm very proud of it. Thank you so much for listening to my story.